Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. Today we are talking about the first six weeks of life in regard to our lambs. So stay tuned to find out more. All right, so here we are on the barn and I happen to have a Southdown mom that just had a baby last night. Now, some of this I actually did last night, but for all intents and purposes, and so you can learn, I am going to go through this with you. So we are going to imagine that labor and delivery went perfectly fine. If you need to learn more about how to deliver a baby lamb, check this link out right here, and it will tell you how to deliver a baby lamb. But we're going to assume that the baby was delivered and everything is fine. And now what we need to do is we need to clip the navel, dip the navel, and make sure that the baby is nursing. So I'm gonna show you really quick, if you come with me, I'm gonna show you how to clip the navel and dip it. Um, so there's a couple different things you can do here. Let me grab our baby here. He's relaxing underneath the heat lamp. We're in the lambing jug here. And this little guy was just born late last night. Hello, my friend. And he is doing fantastic. And you can see I already trimmed his navel and dipped it, but we're gonna, we're gonna show you again. If the navel was long, we would actually take a pair of scissors and clip it. Tessie, you want to grab me those scissors so I can show our viewers? These are the kind of scissors that I would use. And I am, of course, going to uh, use some cleaning solution on these, some iodine or something to make sure that they are sterile um, before I clip the navel. Clip the navel a couple inches long. Uh, and then there's a couple different options you can use. You can use a spray to spray the navel. I like to use this iodine cup. Uh, you can purchase these on uh, Premier One, and I will show you. I'll attach the link below as far as where you can purchase these. But if I tip this down, it fills up with iodine, and I can simply just tip it right up over the baby just like that. As you can see, it dips to the navel, and you are good to go. So other than that, that's all I'm going to do. I'm also going to give the baby you want to hold the baby for me i also like to give the baby a drench in the first very beginning part of life mom and baby are, are talking to each other i like to give a drench for the baby this is a high uh, a high calorie high vitamin e drench comes from hunter nutrition you can buy this for sheep or goats i like to give a, a 5 ml oral drench for the babies at birth as well. So I'm gonna dry the baby off, make sure that it's clean, take care of the navel, and give it an oral drench. When I give the oral drench, just put it in the back corner of the mouth, slowly squeeze, and you can see the baby's gobbling it right up. For those babies that are a little bit slow, maybe not getting with it right off the bat, this will help them out immensely to give them a little bit of extra energy. And you just wanna give it to them just a little bitty bit at a time. If the baby's not swallowing, obviously we don't wanna do this. And again, this is assuming, you can go ahead and put the baby down. And again, this is assuming that everything is going perfectly fine that first night. Now there's all kinds of problems you can have with baby not eating or having problems with mom. But again, we're not talking about that. We're just saying first night we are going So that first day of life, we are going to take care of the navel. We are going to give a little bit of survive. And then I'm also going to give my handy dandy. For those of you that have watched, you've seen this many times before. This is my one half penicillin, one half CDT solution. And I am going to go ahead and give this to the baby now as well. So I'm just going to give my subcutaneous shot. Got him. My partner's going to make sure she holds them very still for me. This is subcutaneous, 1 ml. So that's one half of a CC, a CDT, one half CC penicillin. You can go ahead and put them down. And this is going to help protect against navel ill. That's an infection that can get in the navel. And it's also going to... Uh, protect them against tetanus all right so day one 
We have our baby in here with mom. Baby's been delivered. We processed the baby and baby's doing good. As you can see, we have a heat lamp over here. We have our hay for mom. We have a nice water jug for mom to drink out of. And we are going to leave them alone and leave them in here. Unless we have to, we're gonna leave them in here for 48 hours, 48 hours. There's no reason to take them out of here before then. This is in a nice, safe, secluded spot. It's gonna allow them to bond with each other get comfortable and make sure that everything is going okay before we turn them loose out into general population. So day two has rolled around. Baby's doing a little bit better. We've established that baby's nursing. A few odds and ends that we wanna look at since it's day two. I wanna check the baby's eyes, make sure that we don't have any inverted eyelids. If we have inverted eyelids, this is when we wanna catch it. This is when we wanna treat it. If you watch this video right here, you'll learn how to treat inverted eyelids. The other thing I wanna check is my bite. Make sure there's nothing wrong with the bite. And I also want to check his little teeth and make sure that he doesn't have any really sharp pointy teeth that may be hurting his ability to nurse. If he does, we at this point could file them down. We talk about processing our lambs right here where we show how we dock the tail and tag and do all that. Um, in this case, we have given the CDT and the tetanus the first day of life. Um, and so we're not going to give it again with tail docking and ear tagging. If for some reason you don't tail dock or ear tag until like a week later, go ahead and give the CDT and tetanus, uh, CDT and the penicillin again, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, but we like to do it all within the first couple days of life. So, so we're at the end of day two, we've tagged the ear, we've tagged the, or docked the tail and we are good to go. At this point, we're just leaving baby and mom alone. Mom is getting, uh, at least one flake per head per day of good quality hay. She's getting at least two pounds of good grain, 12, at least 12% grain, and plenty of fresh water. Other than that. All right, so we're on day three. What do we wanna do on day three? Well, on day three, we're gonna cut mom and baby loose into general population with the other moms and other moms that have babies on them. At this point, this is where our creep comes into play. If you come over here and look, you're gonna see that we have our creep set up we're gonna make sure that we have plenty of free choice creep feed, a heat lamp in place, and plenty of good quality hay. So what we are doing is we are essentially setting up an area that only the lambs can get into. We're gonna introduce the lambs. What I like to do is grab my lambs and put them in the creep and let them figure out how to get out instead of trying to push them in through the opening. It's better off to put them in and let them figure out how to get out. Um, so I'm enticing them by giving them their very own special place. They can get underneath the heat lamp and get warm. They can nibble on some hay. They can get a good 20% to 18% high quality feed that they can nibble on whenever they want. Um, and this is going to let them get going at their own pace. There's no need to give probiotics at this point that's insane. I'll just go ahead and say that. Uh, the rumen of these animals is not doing anything at this point. Uh, to start introducing things that aren't natural to this animal, to start doing things, giving them things that nature doesn't intend any more than necessary does no good whatsoever. So at this point, we are basically on cruise control. Um, set up the creep, give them the food that they need and give them a nice heat source and leave yeah. them alone. If and when they decide to go after it, which they will, they will find it, they will go after it and they will be fine. They will do that at all different times. Some lambs will be going after creep feed and hay and everything else after a day or two. Others, it'll take them up to a week. They're gonna spend most of their time around their mom. They're gonna learn from mom. When mom's nibbling on hay, they're gonna nibble on hay. When mom's eating her grain, they're gonna start eating their grain and they'll figure it out as they go along. Other than that, we just wanna leave them alone. No shots, no drenches, no wormers, no gimmicks, nothing. Just leave them alone. Another note about day two and three, if you're going to have failure to thrive issues, this is usually when you're going to start seeing it rear its head. Again, we have lots of videos on dealing with sick animals, uh, but that's not what we're doing here. This is just general assuming everything goes fine video. Um, but just be aware if baby is going to have failure to thrive issues, if they're going to have congenital defects, things of that nature that are gonna keep them from growing and developing, you're usually gonna start seeing them within day two to three. Um, and the reason for that is, is they're probably not getting enough food um, and it's gonna start knocking them back. So just something to keep in mind. 
if you make it past day two, three, getting into day four, baby's doing good, baby's nursing, uh, you're pretty much out of the woods and you can just plan on things being on cruise control for a while. So as we roll forward out of day three, going into day four, into end of week one, week two, week three, again, we're gonna maintain cruise control. We are going to make sure that we keep our creep full of grain for them. Uh, make sure that we keep hay in there, make sure that the heat lamp is on, observe them from a distance and pretty much leave them alone. At this point, there is not a whole lot that you need to do. Um, if you have males and you are trying to determine if you're going to castrate them or not, uh, moving into the end of week three, um, if you haven't castrated by the end of week three, I would go ahead and consider castrating then. Um, if you know you're going to castrate the males and you know for sure you're going to do it, um, you can castrate them as early as when you're doing tail docking and ear tagging. But I like to wait until week three just to kind of give them a chance to grow a little bit so I can determine if they're going to be a show animal or if we're going to be using it for breeding stock. So as we're moving out of week three going into week four, um, you can at this point you can change your creep feed. Uh, we like to start our animals off on a 20% uh, protein creep feed. Moving from week three into week four, at this point you can drop your creep feed down to anywhere from an 18 to a 16%, depending on if these are gonna be show animals or what you're gonna do with them. You don't wanna go any lower than 16. You're gonna maintain 16% creep feed all the way up until you're getting to uh, at least two weeks post weaning. Um, the other thing that you want to consider going into week four time frame is I like to give a vitamin B injection just to give them an extra hand and help get them going. Uh, the rumen in the animal essentially is what uh, starts making the vitamin B. So by giving a vitamin B shot, uh, if you haven't already, you can give vitamin B shots as early as two weeks. Um, but if you haven't given them a vitamin B shot by week four, I suggest doing so. Uh, you can see more about giving a vitamin B shot right here. All right, so moving into week four as well. Now we're talking about CDT vaccinations, initial CDT vaccinations. Uh, if you don't know how to give vaccinations, we have a video right here, which will show you how to give vaccinations. So we give our initial vaccinations for CDT at week four. We give another round at either week six or week eight, um, depending on the species and what time of the year it is. But just know week four, you're gonna be giving your initial vaccinations. Again, after those initial vaccinations, you're kind of on cruise control. So there's not a whole lot that's going on with these animals, as you can see. As long as you've got the creep set up and you're letting them do what they need to do, um, you're taking care of them at birth and they're doing well and you're giving them their vaccinations as needed, um, there's not a whole lot that you need to do. Uh, the earliest, absolute earliest that you would want to wean any lamb would be six weeks of age. We like to run ours all the way out to 12 weeks of age. Um, the longer you let babies stay on mom, the better it is for mom's bags. Um, the, the more naturally her milk production can slow down, the less chance you have of getting mastitis and things like that. Uh, with that being said, when weaning time does come around, if you were to wean at six weeks of age, um, you want to keep the lambs where they are and move the moms away. We always want to keep the lambs in the most uh, least stress environment as possible and that's keeping them where they're used to instead of moving them somewhere else. They still have the creep in place, they're still able to get at things, um, and there's, there's no issues there. So I get a lot of questions about the creep feeder. How much do I feed them? When do I feed them? Again, let's make this as easy as possible. You feed them all the time. This creep feeder is always full. This creep feeder right now is always full, and there are a ton of lambs running around here. You may not see them, but it's always full. They can come in here and eat anytime they want because they have grown up this way they know there's always feed in there they know they can get at it whenever they want they don't gorge themselves when you run into problems is when you limit feed and only give it to them at certain times that's when you get overeating if the animal is trained to know that they can have it anytime they want they don't sit in there and eat until they die so again that's why we introduce the creep at a very very early age and we're gonna keep them on this creep feed as long as we need to to meet the goals that we wanna meet. So again, keep it full all the time. Don't let it run out and you're not gonna have any problems whatsoever. All right, so there you have it in a nutshell. Very, very simple stuff. This is not rocket science. Uh, we just covered 
birth through the first six <laughs> weeks of life. We covered what to do the first day, how to treat the navel. We covered tail docking, ear tagging. We covered castration, vaccinations, injections. And you will notice we keep coming back to this. The most critical part of the whole thing is setting up a functional creep area. This is going to eliminate a majority of the work for you. So if you have questions, comments, concerns, please let us know. Again, I'm Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today, and we look forward to seeing you again next time.